So the basic concept is that we now have to fill the edges. But everything that we do on one side has to be the same as on the other side, but kind of like a continued version of that. So how you do that is you can just copy one of the elements that you see. So you select it and then you hit Command J. And actually, I'm not going to put it there. I decided I want to put it somewhere else instead. So I'm going to place that thing here. And we made the canvas 17 by 17 cm, right? So basically what that means is that this guy now has to move down 17 cm. So we make another copy of that. And you hit Command T. And then up here, You'll see that for this first part, I actually have the entire color layer deselected because I just want to focus on the line work layer first. So if you want, go ahead and deselect the color layer and just select the line work layer and work on that first. And we'll do the whole process of this for the line work layer first and then do the same process for the color layers. So guys, basically whenever you hit Command T, whenever you're about to move an object, in the top left toolbar, you'll see an X value and a Y value indicating the position of that particular object. And sometimes the units will be in pixels or just a unit you can't work with. A way you can change it is you just control click inside of one of the value boxes and then you just from the drop down menu select the unit you want. In my case it's CM. So just change that if you need to and then since we can't just add the value of the canvas to either the X and Y values we actually have to do the calculating ourselves. What I like to do is I just go outside of my Photoshop program, just click outside of it, and then I hit command spacebar, and then the spotlight search bar should come up, and then you can just insert your calculation in there, and then that'll automatically calculate for you. You don't have to pull up the calculator app all the time. You can also just use a real calculator or your phone if you want. So just have a calculator on hand. And then what you do is, for instance, I want to move, in this freeze frame, I want to move that image down to the bottom side of the canvas. So in the Y value, I would just have to add 17 to the negative 4.7. So in my calculator, I just put minus 4.7 plus 17. If that image were on the bottom half of the canvas and the value would be maybe like 17 point something and I wanted to move it to the top, then in my calculator I would have to put 17 point something minus 17 because we're going backwards at that point. Same for if you're moving things right to left, left to right. If you are starting out with your image on the left side of the canvas, then in the calculator you would add the value of the current position of that object plus 17. If it's on the right side, you would do that value minus 17. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, yeah, for any calculation that you make, for the copied image, you put in the new value that you have come up with through your calculation. Anyway, I'm just going to show a fast forwarded clip of me doing the whole thing. You'll see that I am not always putting things right on the edge. Like there are just some areas in my canvas that are empty that are not right in the edge. So you can do that as well. And feel free to rotate your images as well. I think that gives some nice variation to your image as a whole. Another tip that I want to insert here is that whenever you want to move 
a certain element that you've placed on an edge, so any element that is meant to be seamless, you always have to move the copy of the element which you have placed on the opposite edge. So the way that you do that is you just select both layers for both of those elements, then you hit Command T and then you move those elements simultaneously. Because if you only move one element on one edge without moving the other, then it won't be seamless anymore. So before I move on to completely rendering the pattern to its final complete form, I like to do a little review to check if maybe there's some parts that are not completely seamless, because this can happen sometimes, or if there are parts where there are awkward gaps that need to be filled in better. The way that I do that is I go to Edit and Define Pattern, and you basically save that swatch as your pattern. You can give it a name if you want and then you create a new layer, fill it in with a simple white fill, and then in the panel underneath the layers, you'll see in you'll see an effects button. You click on that and then you go and select pattern overlay from the drop down menu. And now in this new window that has just popped up, you can select your newly saved pattern from the drop down menu. And you can even use the scale slider to make that pattern as big and as small as you want. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You already get kind of like a preview as to what your seamless pattern will look like. And then I like to kind of zoom in and do like a scan of the whole pattern to see again if there are any places where the pattern isn't completely seamless or check if there are any awkward gaps and I'm seeing that the pattern is seamless but there are some awkward gaps so I'm gonna go ahead and sort of rearrange them some, some of my elements to fix that a little bit. pattern seamless I'm very happy about that and now what I want to do is I just want to like flatten all of the added on elements that we gathered from our original layer so I'm just gonna get all of these um, select them all by hitting shift and then clicking like that whole column and then hitting command E and then reapplying the multiply layer um, and then I'm just gonna give it a name I guess to make it easier to identify okay and now what we want to do is we want to reapply all of the colored areas It's like 17 by 17 cm and it's 600 dpi but and you definitely don't have to make it that big but the good thing about having a uh, starting file that is that big is that you can apply it like anywhere and at almost like any size so you have more options let me just show you like this pattern in action if you want you can save this version and then flatten it and then save a second version of it that is flattened, that'll make 
this file significantly smaller. So let's just do that. So I'm just gonna save it first, then unlock this, and then delete that, and then flatten the entire thing. And then I'm gonna save it as flat. We'll just go ahead and take a leap. So let's just define the pattern as we have been doing. Um, and then save it. And then let's just go ahead and create a new file. So let's just say maybe you want to create something like, you know how in a Society6 they have like all these different templates. Uh, let's just say you want a, a horizontal file. So let's just go with this setting. And then uh, just create a new fill layer by hitting Option Delete. And then go on Effects, select Pattern Overlay and then select your new pattern that you just made. And the cool thing about this is like, this is now only at like 26%. You can make it go all the way up to like this, which probably is not a good idea. <laughs> it's always best to keep it like under 100% or the max, the max size should be 100%. So let's go with 27%, hit okay, and there you go. Now you have a pattern that you can basically apply anywhere. And it all started with a hand drawing. I think it's okay. I'm going to just double check it after I finish the video, but I hope you liked this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And I just want to add one last thing before I finish this video completely. So I actually wouldn't normally recommend using a textured background for your seamless pattern just because it's hard to make the actual texture seamless. I think that this texture is not a big deal because it's not so obvious, but what I would normally recommend doing is actually getting rid of it and then just making this part seamless. And then wherever you want to apply the pattern, you just apply the background and then you apply the pattern on top of that, if that makes sense. Otherwise, if you still want to have a background and you don't want to go through like the whole process of just adding the extra background to whatever application, uh, I would just stick with like a plain flat background rather than a textured one because obviously it's it's much easier to make that seamless. So I just wanted to add that as a side note and now I'm really going to go. Okay, bye!